Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Like other almanacs, our aim is to tell you a little bit about our past, our present, and events in the near future. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Geraldine McEwen lives and makes beautiful art on a picturesque farm in Fair Hill near historic Elkton, Maryland. I spoke to Geraldine recently in her studio where she told me that she began taking painting classes with adults at an early age and had some success pretty quickly. My grandmother made arrangements for me to go to adult education at night, so I started oil painting when I was 12 and had my first solo show at the school when I was 13. So I've just continued to paint since then. I had some art in college, but in the 60s they were not interested in what I was doing as I've always loved realism. Geraldine left school but continued her education by taking workshops with artists who still valued representational art. It was a foregone conclusion that her life's work would be as a painter. Geraldine says that the creative roots run deep in her family. I've traced it back to the earliest ancestor I can find was a Quaker who came here in uh, 1708. And I found in the archives at Swarthmore, the, the Quaker archives, uh, he did political cartoons uh, about the British before the revolution. His name was Benjamin Chandley. Geraldine has painted the brick meeting house where her ancestor worshiped in nearby Calvert, Maryland, a number of times in different seasons. Her approach to this historic rural scene with its 300-year-old oak tree evokes a strong sense of tradition. This can be seen in its tranquil composition and her adherence to the discipline of transparent watercolors. Well, you don't use white paint because it's opaque and it will muddy your colors. It will make them have a different characteristic. The white mixed with the colors just takes away the luminosity and the transparency. So um, anything that would be white or light in your painting, you save the white paper and you either paint around it or if it's complex you use masking agents. I work from light to dark. You have to learn the nature of the pigments and how to work with them and how to build the layers of color from light to dark. Even though my watercolors are more tightly rendered, I like the luminosity mm -hmm. that comes with them. Yeah, I like the way the water mingles on the paper and interesting things happen and it just that's the primary thing. Geraldine says art is a connection to the inner soul and that each painting is a direct response to a subject that has touched her emotionally. Geraldine finds that inspiration all around her. I see something that just something about it I just think it's beautiful and I think it's it's worth capturing that and letting other people see the beauty and just some little moment that you saw in that day in your life. If a composition sparks her imagination, she usually has a title in mind before going any further. Geraldine then makes sketches or takes photographs of the scene. If she's outdoor plein air painting, she continues to create her painting on site, but if it's something she's catching on the fly, she returns to the studio to create the painting. Though she may do many studies, she works on one painting at a time. Watercolors dry quickly, so she often produces one large painting and two or three smaller works every week. The color in Geraldine's painting is what she calls local color. I tend to be, I've always been more of um, literal, the, the local color, but I've been trying to open myself a little more to um, not only the local color, but thinking more about color theory and thinking more about warm versus cool, thinking about the temperatures. Early in Geraldine's career, she invested time entering juried competitions, which brought her recognition and sales success. When the film Beloved was produced on location in the Elkton area, she was commissioned to paint a landscape of the iconic cottage that was built and used in exterior scenes. This painting was given as a thank you for all the economic gain the film brought to the region to producer Oprah Winfrey, who graciously accepted the work of art personally. The painting has been photographed in Ms. Winfrey's home dining room. 
But Geraldine does not rest on her laurels. She wants to expand her knowledge and experience. I mean, I've been working in watercolor for over 30 years, so ready to do some other things. I've been doing some watercolor portraits, which is new for me. And I've been going back to oils, doing some oil work. And I've been doing um, plein air nocturnes, just simply for myself. And I enjoy that. I've been doing that on full, full moon. I think with it, for me, I think I hear this from other artists too. We're just always, our mind is just always looking at the world as subject matter for a painting. And I, I told, I've told my students this funny story that um, one day we were taking paintings to Annapolis. I'm in a gallery. I, I didn't mention that. I'm, I don't do a lot of art shows. I'm doing more with gallery shows. So I was delivering paintings to the gallery there, and I said to my husband, today I don't want to think about art. I just want to go, let's go in this nice pub, let's have a nice lunch. I'm going to just tune out from art. So we went in, and the pub had skylights, and the light was falling in onto this beautiful mosaic floor, and the wood of the the bar and I was watching the bartender and the wood and everything and for about half an hour I couldn't stand it anymore and I pulled out my camera and I snuck some pictures and then I said I've got to go ask the bartender if I can use these pictures and he said yes so I mean we just we can't tune out of seeing the world as their subject Geraldine just finished a show this spring in Elkton at the Palette and Page Gallery and Bookstore. See a video of this interview with examples of Geraldine's work along with a link to her website and galleries showing her work at delmarvalmanac.com slash arts. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio and the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters eatdrinkbyart.com for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune. <laughs>